Welcome in to episode 18 of our Let's Play Humankind series at Humankind Difficulty. We're at the top difficulty level. We are trying to grind our way through. We are now into the early modern era. We have moved up and chosen the Muggles. We're about to get our first full episode really into the Muggles and see what we can accomplish as we wrap our minds around what does it mean to now enter what I would definitely consider mid-game and set up for some end-game conditions. We've established ourselves, we've got our empire kind of where we want it to be, potentially, we'll talk about that in just a moment, but how do we now set up for some end-game conditions? How do we start to think about, as we're in the mid-game, transitioning towards some of those end-game things and making sure we can attempt our best to secure a win here at the top difficulty level. If you need to catch up on any of the episodes, the link to episode one is down in the description below. You can click on that and find out how we got to where we are. Of course, if you like the content, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Really helps the channel out and I appreciate that. Make sure you're subscribed and have that notification bell turned on so that you know when we publish these videos. But let's jump into the early modern era and see how we are going to tackle getting into this mid-game condition. We are, of course, back in our capital of Anug. If you remember way back so long ago, we started as the Sumerians, as a very interesting pick by me. I'd never played the Sumerians. I'm not sure how effective that choice ended up being for us. It was intriguing at the time. Uh, you know, it works, you know? I like this game because you could always pick different things and play different ways, and so that's exciting. Um, but Anug, the capital of Sumeria, is where we began all of this. We now own our entire continent. We have a couple connections left to make. We did manage to get out into the new world, although Icarus Purple here really uh, came down and, and just like claimed an immense amount of territory, an immense amount of land. I actually, we're gonna make a call here, and I thought about this uh, in between recordings. Icarus is ahead of us by a small chunk here. We're even-ish in stars, and we have a deficit to Icarus. I think this is a very surmountable deficit, but we have a couple of really important things we want to do. One of those things is we need to finish the Tota G. We are two turns away from finishing the Tota G so that we can claim the Brussels Town Hall. That will give us 50 fame for each previously claimed uh, wonder in my empire and another 50 every time we construct a new one. So that's going to be a large chunk of fame. Brussels Town Hall is a very, 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 very potent wonder if you have been able to build or plan to build some additional wonders throughout the game. Honestly, even if you're just building a couple wonders, Brussels Town Hall nets you another 100, 200, like, it, 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 like you get a chunk. And yet, even 100 to 200 fame is a pretty big deal in these high-level games. When you're playing at the top difficulty, 200 fame can make or break a win, potentially, when you get down to it. I've had games that have ended very, very tight with the AI in Humankind difficulty, and so Brussels Town Hall can be very impactful. We definitely want to claim this. We've been building wonders a lot, like way more than I probably even normally do. It's just the game presented itself that way. We had the opportunity to do it, and so we've been doing it. So we want to claim Brussels Town Hall. That's going to get us a, a big, a big boost. But we're also going to try for Machu Picchu for reasons we'll talk about if we can get it. Uh, but Machu Picchu would also be good for us. So, but Brussels Town Hall first. We got to finish Tota G to be able to claim it. And I don't know. We're saving our influence as well. I don't remember how much it's going to cost for us to claim yet another, yet another wonder. Here's what I'm thinking. We currently have one, two, three, four, five cities. Icarus has four, but they're nice big cities. I'm wondering if we want to attempt to get a sixth city. And uh, what I'm thinking is maybe we keep Palataputra just like three. Maybe it is just these three territories, possibly. And maybe we just go burn these two down and attach these three into a second smaller city on the New World. And so we go with like two small cities on the New World. The reason why we might want to do this is, is multiple fold. You get access to more 
builders, uh, or sorry, more buildings, right? So essentially, when you have more cities, you can get builder stars easily, more easily because you can have more buildings being constructed simultaneously than otherwise. Now, if you combine stuff in, you might be able to build those buildings slightly faster, but I am almost fully convinced that having more cities can get you certain stars faster. Growth stars is one of those things. Uh, you run into fewer population problems when you have uh, uh, like multiple smaller cities. So I used to think that building kind of bigger land grab type of cities that were like, that incorporated a lot were, was the way to go. I'm kind of been leaning towards maybe smaller territory cities as an answer to getting enough cities in to be able to get builder stars, agrarian stars in a faster way. I, I'm not sure. In the comments, let me know how you play. Do you play with large cities where you get lots and lots of attachments? What's your attachment number? I have typically gone with like the five, like five attachments being like maybe six in the capital because they have that state stability bonus. I'm thinking that those cities might just be too big, potentially. Maybe uh, you'd be better off with like three or four attached cities because then you could fit more cities on the map and potentially get better gains that way. Here is my hyper-aggressive play that I think we are going to make. And, and there's a piece of information that I'll share with you that I found out just before I hit record that I want to, uh, that might help kind of fit this all together. We're going to go burn these two territories down. I'm going to go try to take these. Then we're going to form a city somewhere in here. And that will... <laughs> That will ire Icarus, who arguably has probably a much stronger army, and it would be arguably potentially a bad thing to do this, but we're gonna we're gonna push buttons a little bit. And the reason that is is because uh, what are we gonna do with this? Like this, this, we're just gonna put a city here or something? Like, I don't know. So we're just gonna burn this down. We're gonna try to put a se a separate city in right here, uh, and then see how things kind of go. So let's Let's uh let's just head our guys there. We get over here in two turns actually, so let's just we'll just go. We're just gonna go that way. We're gonna see we're gonna see what happens. Uh we're gonna see if we can if we can pull off a couple of quick burns here, and then and then it will it will give us a nice look too. Uh, the it will look much nicer if our territory kind of this is just you know get, get, get out of here. We let's connect in. The ocean will be our break, and then we'll be over here. The thing that is making me think that I can play aggressively is this. There is currently an international crisis afoot. Plosif, who has been a vassal of Icarus for almost the entire game, if you recall, has actually asked for their secession paperwork. Uh, they are ask asking for grant freedom, and currently no one is voting in this, I think because they're all terrified... <laughs> Uh, of Icarus, and so no one is voting. Well, we're gonna vote. Uh, even though Plosif has been arguably the aggressor and wanting to attack us, and if we do this, we may end up... The funny thing about this is, we may end up in a war with Plosif because we're granting Plosif freedom from Icarus. Because Plosif is hyper-aggressive towards us and actually has closer borders to us than Icarus does, at least to our main continent, this might end up backfiring in that way on us. However, it will slow Kid Icarus's lead in fame because he won't be getting vassal vassalization bonuses anymore. So uh, we're going to vote to support Plosif. We're going to throw our support here uh, and and see how, what happens. I if what happens is that Icarus declares war on Plosif as a result of the, the World Congress and going against the World Congress, honestly, that would be fine. I would love for these two to war each other. That would be a perfect scenario for me, because then they can go to war against each other, and we can just go do our own thing. The reason... Uh, so that, for this reason, that is why I think we can play a little aggressively on Icarus here and try to take some territories back, put in potentially an extra city over here, uh, which could be highly useful for us uh, as we kind of jump into uh, the future eras and making sure we have enough of those builds and things like that. The other thing we're doing right now is we were trying to attack this city because it has the Pemukali, uh, which which is nice. It gives you plus five influence, plus five money on market orders. Actually, what I'm thinking about it, it's not the greatest wonder, right? Like, it's not... 
it's not amazing. It's gorgeous. Like, look at it in-game. Like, look at this wonder. I mean, it is absolutely stunning. They have done such a good job with, with wonders and, and just the look and overall feel of this game. But it's not, like, the most amazing wonder to have. Now, I wanted to incorporate it into my capital so that my capital would have... How many wonders is my capital going to have? Uh, Pamukkale, Great Blue Hole... We have uh, the Gunung Mulu down here, and then we also have, uh, where, down here somewhere, right? We had another one. Did we not? Yeah, the Great Barrier Reef down here. So, we, we would love to bring another wonder into our capital. That would be absolutely fantastic. It makes our capital just uh, crazy. Like, the stats would be amazing. Uh, Plosif is basically just causing every sort of problem here for us as we try to do this. Uh, if you remember at the end of last episode, I got very angry at the <laughs> ambush. And the way the ambush mechanism currently works, I just I just don't care for it very much. Uh, we'll have to see what happens here. This is going to be very interesting to, to figure out. I probably need to get this army back home. We might need to come back and attempt this fight at a different time. Maybe when maybe when Icarus and Plosif are at war or Plosif has something else to do. So I think we're going to abandon the idea of attacking this city. Uh, they actually... It looks like they... They only have 12 turns left before they disappear. Which is interesting, because people are investing pretty heavily in them. Uh, so I, I doubt that that's actually the case. It probably will be much longer than 12 turns as people continue to invest in them. But uh, we'll probably back off here. I'm not interested in losing my armies and more of my ha highly experienced units that we can upgrade later into good defensive armies on on a wonder that's like, eh. Like, our capital's big enough. We don't have to have this. And I get the feeling... That if we took this and claimed it, even if we added it to our capital, I think that any... Like, this is just going to get contested so heavily because it's on a continent that we arguably probably shouldn't have a claim on. I, I just feel like this is going to be more trouble than it's worth. That being said, we could get some nice military stars out of doing it. So it's frustrating that we got stymied here. Uh, we'll keep debating it. We'll keep debating it. I got to get my armies healed up, so we'll at least have to pull off into our islands over here with our armies consolidate maybe, figure out if we want to expand those armies as we go in, upgrade them at all. We also have to avoid Plosif's navy, uh, which is hugely problematic because if he comes out and fights us as we try to get out, uh, which he definitely could, then that will also be a problem for us. So uh, lots to think about as we're jumping in here. But that is really everything that we need to talk about before we move into our turns. We've got a lot of building to do. Uh, so let's jump in and we'll hit the next turn button here and see if we can't get Tota G built and then get uh, the Brussels Town Hall claimed. One turn remains. Leverage is being collected. So our, our envoys, uh, don't forget our envoys this whole time. We have max envoys out and they're still out and about uh, hanging out, doing their thing, collecting envoys. Icarus is attacking Nox in just like random locations, apparently. We've got grievances. And Icarus has now declared war on Burley as well. So Icarus maybe potentially that war, they just ended a war uh, from what I recall. Like this, there was wars going on between Icarus and Burley, I think because of all the New World claims going on. Um, I This is kind of fascinating. I'm not sure. Look at Nox. Nox just has three random cities. She's just been hanging. Burley, Burley vassalized her early on in their continental war. And Nox has just been hanging on to a few cities. So, uh, interesting. This, this is going to end. Plosif is too powerful to be vassalized for much longer, which the, the World Congress vote will determine in just like a turn or so. Uh, so that will be interesting. All right, we're bringing our boats back around. This is, I think, an important step for us uh, to get our navy around our own continent because I feel like we are going to get pressured regardless I feel like we're going to get pressured on our on our home continent here in just a little bit, potentially. And so if we can bring our our navies back, we can create kind of a naval barrier for armies landing on our land. I think we need to get a, like a quite a substantial navy to surround our continent and make sure that we don't get any weird uh, invasions from across the sea uh, because those are hard to defend against. So these guys are already kind of paying attention to, right, like if Plosif's got an envoy here, that's fine. We can deal with that. Uh, although, arguably, he's attacked us a bunch. Maybe we should just attack his envoy. That would get Tell us more support, yourself. right? But that would give him more support because we would have attacked him. Uh, I don't know. I feel like we can... I don't want 
As Plosif gains his independence, we might want to establish a trade relationship again if we can. I doubt that that's even possible at this point, but... Early's got... Early's got a Mongol horde sitting outside my land? Greetings. Early, what's to up what here? I owe this pleasure? Needy. And no war support, so, like, we're fine here, it seems. Oh, we can propose a, tr a treaty. Gosh, Early, what do you want? I'd love to trade more with you, actually. Can we have a customs union? This proposition should be in all... Early. Come on now. Come on now. Okay, uh, so we're gonna... Man, I don't know. Let's... If I come up here and do this... We have three envoys sitting right here? What is happening? Like an envoy convention going on in a cod? A weird thing that's going on. Uh, so I think we're gonna... We're gonna try to run our guys out. Let's get everybody... Let's get everybody to the edge. We'll try to get them in the water and then back into our land, uh, and we'll, we'll we'll regroup right here. I mean, we're we're easily within striking distance if we need to be. Uh, we'll regroup here and see what we can what we see. We'll we'll keep viewpoints right. Our envoys currently are actually doing us a huge favor by showing us kind of what's happening over here. You can see that this army is the one that's been causing us a bunch of trouble. Uh, the prowlers are hidden in here somewhere that have been causing all the ambushes, but um, all of that has been frustrating me to no end. Uh, let's see. Where do we want to go? I guess out here. Like, there could be, you know... There could be things and places to explore. Curiosities to garner in the open waters. I'm kind of I'm manually controlling this particular navy right now just because I don't want them to, like, auto-explore away from my, my home territory, right? So that's kind of what we're doing right now. All right, Toda G will be built in a turn... Beauty. Uh, I think we're good to go. What? What? How, how happened if here? If you seek the greater good, then I would know you better. I don't know. Well, yeah, this relation, that relationship is is all sorts of messed up. When does this end? One turn. Burley is demanding that not wait. Sorry, Burley is demanding that Knox pay them money, even though Knox is the vassal of Burley. Huh? <laughs> I don't, I don't know what's going on around here. That's just strange. All right, we claim a new Today order. was the largest wood structure in the world for 1,200 years, more or less. Nice. That should impress anyone. If must are earned, that's good. Go to Wonders. Ah, Santa Maria del Fiore has been claimed by Plosif. So Plosif will be building uh, the Santa Maria del Fiore. So, uh... Interesting. Interesting choice. We got that's a very common scorer heavy building. Uh, no other buildings have been claimed. So you have the Palace of Versailles, which is very kind of diplomatically oriented uh, to get with leverage stuff. You've got Top Cappy, which I think is a fantastic, uh, fantastic wonder, especially for end game conditions, because you get that plus 100% production towards shared projects, which is really big and 5% industry as well. So Top Cappy is a, a really potent wonder, I believe. Uh, the St. Basil's Cathedral is not bad either, especially if you pair it with the right things. Plus one faith per district. I mean, it's a huge amount of faith. And so if you have, let's say, uh, something like... Which one do we have? Angkor Wat, which gives you food per faith. Uh, that pairs very nicely with something that increases your faith, because that actually also then increases your food. Right? Um, so also very interesting. Machu Picchu is great because it takes your food from a single city and disperses a 50% amount of that out to all of your other cities, which that's wildly good, just so you know. Even if your city's not producing a ton of food, to be able to basically just create 50% of the food from a city and all of your other cities just get that food, that's great. Uh, so Machu Picchu is very powerful regardless of whether you've kind of like prepped into it or not. Machu Picchu works really well for, from a food perspective. Uh, the Hotel Des Invalides. Uh, also, this one's more uh, like go to war kind of thing, right? Uh, units regenerate a small amount of health when outside your territory. That's nice if you're at war. In fact, it's really nice. Uh, obviously, you get combat strength for veterancy level, which is huge. So if you've got some veteraned up people, they're going to get even better. Uh, and then you get get a little bit of uh get a little bit of, of money when you're destroying units uh but then also you get this units disbanded in foreign territories grant population to your capital so you could be out in the middle of a war 
disband units and you still get them back in your capital, which, I mean, I don't know how useful that is. It's an interesting mechanic, though, for sure. Uh, but Brussels Town Hall, obviously, we talked about this, but 50 fame for previously claimed wonders, 50 fame for every one you construct after that, uh, and then you have your 20 stability, your 10 influence per adjacent district, your 15 industry per adjacent market quarter, and your 15 money per adjacent maker's quarter. So kind of go whichever direction you want. Uh, we'll probably surround it with some uh, Jama Mas Jeeds at this point, uh, get a little bit of extra money out of those Jama Mas Jeeds, but we can also put some market quarters around them just to buff our industry, which would be really nice. So we're going to put a claim in here. It does cost 5,000, so I'm glad we saved all of our influence for that. I'm gonna put that claim in, and the question is, do we build it right away? Um, we did lose our, we did lose our Noust. Also burnt that Noust down three times. Three times that Noust got burnt down. All right, so Urum has reached starvation again. Let's go take a look at Urum. Uh, oh, they're just at zero food. Perfect. Okay, so they're gonna build this artificial reservoir. They'll start growing again. So we're not actually worried about that. They're not gonna lose population. In fact, I don't mind that they stagnate for a little while here. That's that's fine. I mean, growth is good, but uh, not growth if it costs us other things. Oh, we also want to switch all of our cities back to science, right? Because we're early in an era. We want to push science hard. Ah, yeah, like Karal was putting everyone into money. Let's, uh, let's make those switches. That's probably, relatively speaking, important. And let's at least find a spot for Brussels Town Hall. Um, so, let's see. We want it to be adjacent to some districts. It's got stability. You know where we might want to put this? We might want to put this in Corral. For that extra... For that extra bit of stability. Because Corral has just monstrous stability problems. So, I'm thinking... We put Brussels Town Hall in Corral. We might even put this Cloud Shrine in Corral as well. We just need stability here, right? Like this, we, that attachment we made, has we've never recovered from that. And we're going to need increased stability here. Actually, you know what would really make sense here now? Would be the Apothecary. Well, that's only five, but we're going to get more. Uh, let's place Brussels Town Hall in, in this spot. Somewhere in here. Where's our... Our best spot is going to be somewhere where it already has a bunch of adjacency. That's kind of wild. That would be a good market quarter spot, but that that makes a ton of sense right there, right? Want it next to maker's quarters, or we want it next to market quarters? How are we getting so much production out of putting this down? Is the, the Noust? Noust counts as a market quarter. That's where we're getting that from. Uh. Right. You know what we you know what would actually be a great spot? <laughs> right next to the Kothan? Because it counts as a market and a maker. Oh my gosh, do you think you get double bonuses for that? Do you think if we put it next to this Kothan that you get double bonuses from being Kothan adjacent? Do we have a Kothan here? We do. Hold on, let me check let's check. You 100 percent do. You get double bonuses off of that? Right, because that's fifth. It's fifteen plus fifteen gold. It's also fifteen from the maker's quarter because of the Kothan. And then you also are getting the exploit. Is it is it full exploit? It full exploits as well. I mean, that's an unfortunate location for this because we're only going to get one other district next to it. And you really want to surround it with things, but putting it next to a Kothan is fascinating. Unfortunately, I can't attach this territory because it would break the city from a stability standpoint and it, we wouldn't actually gain what we needed to gain, but that is a fascinating... I might just do it anyway. Problem is, you can get so much gains. So much gains if you can full surround it. We only get to put one other district next to it, and your, your, your regular harbor doesn't count as anything, right? Does it count as a mar it doesn't count as a market quarter, right? So, uh, you can't like put that here and like benefit from it in any real way, shape, or form. So it would suck to put it here, but the bonuses are really fascinating. That's just something to think about in the future. You have Kothans or other like malt like maker makers and makers and market quarters. That's a slick way. That's a slick way to do things. Yeah, this might this might just be the play here. 
we just put it here. And then we'll put a market quarter here because that makes sense with this. And that gets us a full surround with districts. One, two, three, four. There's only we're only missing out on two of the tiles there. I'm not opposed to that. I think that would be fine. This spot would actually be hilariously good. Right here would be really awesome for this. I think we're just gonna put it here though. Why not? Alright, we're just gonna put it down. So we're gonna put it down, but then we're not gonna we're not gonna work it, I don't think. I almost feel like we need we have a lot of like trade going through here. I almost want to put a holy site in here. Where are we getting religious pressure from right now? We're getting religious pressure from over here. I wouldn't be opposed to a holy site on this side is not a bad idea. I'm going to put a holy site down here. That's what we're going to do to fix our, our stability in Karal. Let's check our other city's stability really quick because Palette of Future was having... Ah, they're fine. Let's put a holy site in Karal. Let's do that. Put a holy site in this territory somewhere. Like up in, like right there actually. Right here on this snow. Boom, holy site. Let's build the holy site first. That should temporarily fix our drop in stability in three turns. Then we can start putting turns into Brussels Town Hall with Karal, which is our most potent city as far as production is concerned. I think that's a pretty solid idea. All right, we're going to take a risk now and we're going to put guys in the water. Yeah. We get these guys in the water, we have to get them into our territory before Plosive destroys us. Mm -hmm. We're gonna, gonna tack them both in there and then try to do that as quickly as possible. Uh, we are here, in this place. Uh, we're about to potentially very much anger people. Hi, sorry, we have to burn your stuff down now. I apologize in advance. I just want to be at peace with you, but currently you have too much land and you're angry at me, so I guess this is how our relationship has to be right now. Alright, this guy's hanging out. We got like ocean over here though, so we can we can kick out like over here. See what we can find. Ah, there we go. That's why we're here. Perfect. Perfect. Last rites. The holy city of Karal is famous across the world. Every year, thousands of followers of the faith come to the city in their old age, hoping that if they die, they'll be able to partake in the funeral rites near the Great Mosque of Jenny. This practice has been condoned for many years, but the space is becoming limited, and tensions between locals and outsiders grows more heated with every passing season. How should the incoming faithful be treated? Uh, that... So the stability is actually really interesting. I never do refuse, but, uh, the stability would be kind of nice right now. Uh, we get Prosperous for money. That pushes us further in this direction, which I like. So Prosperous is not bad. We could also take Fanatical and push our religion really hard for a little bit here. Trying to get that final tenant. This only moves us back one on the science scale of things. I'm actually not opposed to this. I think we're going to limit and take the Fanatical and really push our religion for the next 10 turns. Like, just try to get a bunch of followers. I'd like to get that final tenant right? The faster we get it, the more benefit that we have from it, and in fact, if we get to pick if we get to pick the tenant that we want which is donate generously uh, we'll get three extra holy sites to build, which will help our stability in a lot of different places. What What is sustain? Plus 20 stability on territories of territories follow a foreign religion. Why would you pick this? I, I don't religion in this game confuses me still. I try to understand is that if you've adopted someone else's religion? But why? then how would you pick that tenant? <laughs> I, that's very confusing to me. Or I guess it would be like if you're losing your religion? I don't, I don't know. That's just, it just seems strange. Alright, we solved Urim's problems already. I gained 50 leverages against Kid Icarus because of their surprise war on Plosive. Okay, so here we go. Plosive has renounced uh, the vassalage of Icarus, but Icarus, as a result of the vote in the World Congress, has said, no, we're going to war, you cannot leave my vassalage ship. Uh, and so the war has broken out. There we go. I can ask for reparations. So stuff is going down across the world, and now we have a large war brewing on this continent. That is really good news for us in... Just, I, I can't imagine that. Welcome. I can't imagine that Let going us poorly for us, basically. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, we can't make any deals. We can't do anything with Icarus. Wonderful to see you. Wonderful to see you as well. Do we have a crisis? Oh, you're you're a vassal. Tell me your concerns, friend. 
Really, should we be trading more? I feel like we should trade more. Should I get some copper from you? It would cost us uh, from 162 to 219. And I've actually been misreading these. So if you've been following the episodes, I've been just looking at this number. Because when you first open trade, that's what's important. Uh, but you actually, you're like, we're spending 162 right now, period. And we would just be increasing that to 219. And so the difference is actually only that, like, 40, 60, 60 gold-ish to maintain this trade route. That's a chunk of gold. But I think we want to do this, get access to a ton of copper, <clears throat> and then put those, the, the infrastructure for copper in. I think I actually kind of want to do this. Just buy all of it. And then we need to put those buildings in, essentially, right? I don't think we need any of these quite yet, although... Yeah, we could get some... These are cheap. They're very cheap. Spendy as far as, like, maintenance of trade routes is concerned. Ish. But, I don't know. Let's... We'll hold on that. You expect greetings? Blades would be more appropriate. Look, I could be your friend. We could be friends, Plosif. Oh, we got a whole bunch of... That's right. We actually can... We can, like, propose things now. Hey! Oh, we got a bunch of, like... Yeah. Bunch of stuff against you already? Cool. Our war support's super high against Plosif. If he wants to fight, he can. But let's go humanitarian aid. Let's just test the waters with an aggressive friend. We would all benefit you want from some help closer, in your war? No? You okay. Think? Well, look. I... That's... That's on you, then, friend. That's not my problem anymore. Okay, let's check all our cities. So, Anug is building a Naust. I don't like that. Let's not... Let's not build a Naust. Um, let's... Let's come down to infrastructures really quick and check, like, 27 industry in one... Oh, my God. So, one turn for 27, another turn for 27. 44 in two turns. Okay, so let's... Oh, we just put all that into the queue. So, all of this needs to go in. In, in, in. We need to build these. If I just do all of this, it will just build all of them, right? Okay. Uh, then let's flip this to the back. Okay. Let's get some infrastructures in. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing here. Uh, it's... It's gonna be, uh... This is... Enug is... Enug is in a state, but that's okay, because we're increasing our production value. I don't know what's happening here. It's gonna be wild. Let's get those three in, and then we'll reconsider in Enug. Uh, Urim's gotta get that in, so we know we're good there. Uh... Huatu is building Nausts, which actually is not the worst thing for them. I'm actually okay with this. They can actually finish their Nausts off, I think, because they need some food, and the Nausts are going to get us big food. So let's get some of the Nausts in in Huatu. We already know Karal is doing their thing. And then what do we got going on in Palataputra? Palataputra is finishing a garrison, which is not bad, and then they can get a Nausts in. So this is fine. I, I'm fine with this build order as well. Okay, so let's, let's keep things rolling. We have wars afoot on the land. Gotta get our guys into our territory. There we go. Uh, do we put them on... Ooh, we got a Karak. Okay, we have a Karak now. This is big. Where do we just get a Karak from? Karaks are incredibly potent in this game. The military advantage you get with Karaks is huge. I think I wanna stick... Can we put these armies together yet? No, not really, right? So, I think I just wanna, like, have them... Setting just, like, get on land, I guess. They can just hang out on land for a little bit. So these guys... These guys are cruising back towards our land. In fact, we're almost there. Nice. That's a good one. Swing them into the water, maybe? See if there's any other curiosities to collect. Keep them roaming. These guys are about to get home as well. Swing them, like, right... Th well, it's not... Not overcommit. We could find a curiosity we want to go after. I've been making that mistake repeatedly throughout the series, is overcommitting to movement. Uh, here's our brand new Karak. Oh, nice. Right outside of our territory. Honestly, we just bring this Karak over here all by itself. We just bring him this way. He'll just be threatening. Like, look at the attack on this. 56 attack strength on this Karak. Oh, uh, well... Yes, Mr. Crack. Well, I this this probably that guy's gonna go get it, but we can go get it on the next turn. Uh, 56 attack strength on a crack. Let's go look over here, real quick, at our current our current military. Cogs have 45. 
So 45 is okay. Uh, but they are a boarding vessel, okay? They cannot target land units. The difference with the Karak at 56 attack strength is they can attack onto land. Now, let's take a look at, like, the most powerful unit we can see. What's the... We have, like, a... Is there an army over here that we can look at again? Uh, I wish I could see... Oh, this army. Let's look at this army up here. Uh, so currently, knights are, like, pretty potent, right? Uh, so we got knights. They have a Semenyaha. How did they get a Semenyaha? Buy a unit from me? I didn't even know we had that treaty signed at any point. Um, knights are, like, the current unit, right? Like, that's about on par. Like, they might be, a, like, an era back or something. 36. That's 20 less attack. And Karax can attack onto land. Any battle that involves a shoreline that a Karak can get to makes the four tiles away from the coastal line impossible to move on to because a Karak will one-shot just about any unit that you have on land right now. Uh, I think that it is uh, ridiculous. I think that... I, I don't mind that they're powerful. That's fine. But the fact that they... Like, any... Getting one shot by a Karak on a, in a land battle where the land units are like fighting equivalently and having a Karak come in and just one shot your units, eh, very frustrating. Very frustrating. The wisdom of others. Your merchants trek the world, reaching great markets and far climes and selling highly prized natural riches for much coin. Conversely, your empire sees many traders from distant lands visiting our plazas with their goods, their wit, and their provocative ideas. When their knowledge contradicts the wisdom of your elders, it raises a question of who you should trust. Check knowledge authorities. Uh, plus one science per researcher on City or Outpost. Or plus one science per number of trade routes on City or Outpost. Now, this used to be an automatic foreign innovations. You used to just automatically choose foreign innovations because it was usually just a completely ridiculous number. Now, if we go to the trade screen, we will see uh, that... There are... How many how many trade routes are there? We used to be able to see number of trade routes. Does it show that in the trade screen? Or do we have to be out of the trade screen? Maybe we just click on the... Because you used to be able to just click on the city and you'd see trade routes from that city. But have they... I think they've changed that. Where... Where is that? Ah, yeah. You used to, like, hover over it. Right. Oh, it doesn't tell you anymore. It doesn't tell you anymore. Resources at this trade relay. 93 sold, 143 bought, 46 extracted. I mean, so here's what I don't understand. Does this only apply to your capital now, right? Because if we click here and hover over it, I'll see, it is a trade, it is a trade route. 45 sold, 59 bought. What's the total number of trade routes though? Is it the combination of those? Because if that's true, that's an obscene, obscenely large number. There's so much trade running through here. Maybe Foreign Innovations is still, like, instantaneously amazing? I'm not going to enact it quite yet, because I think our science is pretty high. Uh, maybe I have to think about that. Maybe somebody, somebody... Post in the comments if you know... It doesn't say number of trade routes anymore. So then it becomes very confusing if you're looking at like, something like Knowledge Authorities for number of trade routes on City or Outpost. If you get plus one science and there was 59 resources sold through there, that's 59 science in just a single city. Then you extrapolate that across all your cities and you're upping your science by just a ludicrous amount. I'm going to save it because I want to claim Machu Picchu and I need tons of influence for that. So we'll save for now. We might we might enact that later on, though, for sure. If fame could be purchased on the open market uh -oh. with 15 market We're all quarters, having problems. you'd be rolling in it. All right. All right, Coral, you have one turn. Don't worry, you have one turn. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. In one turn, we'll at least boost you up a little bit. I'm sorry about all the problems you've had ever since I made that attachment that I did not realize there was like 50 districts here. We could just burn some of them down. Uh, I guess that would be one option, but... Okay, these guys are hanging out. They're back home now. We finally got our... This was our free our free army of cogs, right? Oh, we're gonna take a bunch of damage because I decided not to get back on the land. Oops. Sorry. We can heal up in a second. Just want a victory through an ambush. 
who do we have that could possibly ambush? Watch who has gained pop. That's good. I'm not, I haven't been getting that message very often anymore. Although, that probably means they're gonna... I crack collected that. Swing him. Unless we, do we see anything else up there? Let's swing him down here. We need to pressure, potentially, right? We want to pressure any sort of naval um, movement from Plosive. What's what's Plosive doing here? Tell me about yourself. Downgraded a treaty, or what did he do? I don't know. Said that he did something, but I'm not sure. Maybe it was just a change in status. All right, so let's heal these guys. What about upgrading them as well. All right, Paltaputra. Oh wow, they actually finished their Noust in that turn as well. Okay, beautiful. So we have decent on food. We have hit the pop cap. So in a perfect world, we definitely start working on our Hamlets now. We're gonna take a quick aside to put in this and anything that's gonna like get us like huge gains. We need to like a, a quick check on like really big gains, including. Potentially putting our apothecary in. We're dropping in stability here again. Uh, oh man, we got some big science things we can put in. It's 24 science on a library. Also have a 16 food and a 22 food. Let's get the forge in, and then I think we're gonna go into at least let's go one hamlet, and then we start our Jama Mosjis. Might even we have to go Brussels Town Hall at some point too. I wonder if we just go Brussels Town Hall after this really quick, and then into a Hamlet? Ugh, it's gonna be- it's gonna get tricky. It's gonna get tricky. And Nug is still building a water mill, so that is good. We got two turns left uh, for Urim to get back on their feet. And we got one Naus left, I think, in Huatu, so... Early, what? What? Early. Early, what are you doing? Early? There's an Agrarian Star, we got a little growth going on. We have successfully ransacked, we'll acknowledge that, uh, Corral and a Nug. So a Nug now dropping in one turn, they're gonna drop, they got another population and it's just killing them. It is killing them. Okay, so we have 3,000 gold to spend. We cannot buy a district. Is there anything that extends our population? Which, which, which of these gives us extra pop, right? One of them does. We get plus two researchers if we put in our House of Scribes. So our House of Scribes would definitely be something that we can put in. That is helpful. Uh, there's another one over here, I think, that does that too. Uh, it must be this. No. We don't have that one unlocked yet. Is there any... Over here, that plus two worker slots? Okay, so we're going to buy out the Artisan Workshop. We're going to buy the Artisan Workshop. That's going to immediately solve our problems. And then we're going to build... Why do we, we build the House of Scribes? What's our build cost on? Yeah, we build the House of Scribes. We take that. Let's put the House of Scribes in. We'll build it. We are going to need food, so building the Naus is not the worst idea in the world. Um, we kind of need to put a Hamlet down at some point in the near future here. Four-turn build on a Hamlet. Maybe we four-turn in a Hamlet really quick. We also want to put turns into Brussels Town Hall. So let's get the House of Scribes in, then I'm going to scoot Brussels Town Hall all the way over here. I've never had queues like this in my life. This is wild. I do want to get Brussels Town Hall in so we can take a shot at another wonder. Okay, so here's what we need to do. We're going to have to put it down and then move it, right? Like, that's... we already know that. That's a 10-14. 9-14 down here if we just, if we just want to leave it there. And not have to move it back. I like the access this gives us. This land is not great. This land is better. You know what? I'm just going to put it here. I'm going to put that here. Boom. We make a claim. Uh, then we're going to burn this down. And then we have to think about... Oh, we also have to think about influence to put our city down, right? Do we have... Uh, where are we at of research stuff? Always, when you're thinking about making a city mid-game into late game, uh, always check your research tree. Because you want to make sure... Ah, see, we don't have three massive ship research. Before we put our city in, we 100% want to have colony planned down so that we get all of the infrastructures that go along with three massive ship, right? Uh, so we definitely want to do that. Uh, we have six turns to humanism, so we're going to go... Man, that's a lot. Six turns into humanism. Then colony plan 
after that before we can put a city in? Ugh. Okay, so maybe we do need to push science a little bit. Maybe we should think about maxing out some science in, in little ways. Let's, uh, these guys can kind of float around. We want to keep them in our territory, though, because we want them to be healing. These guys could just float back in this direction again. Float your way over here, see if any curiosities spawned. And then maybe we go into better, like, defensive positions with some of these. These guys are going to hang out. We're going to keep looking, though. We want, we want to just be aware of what's happening here. Ten turns? Because if this city disappears, and we just, we just pop up here and claim it, you know? That would be, that would be, like, optimal, right? In fact, you know what? I'm gonna take these guys, because I'm not gonna upgrade them, because they upgrade into, oh, they upgrade into halberdiers now. Ooh. That's actually, now that's tempting. Because halberdiers have a 42. I wanna go down here. How about the whole arm? We're gonna go down here, and then we're just gonna sit right here, so that if this if this disappears in ten turns, we just have the ability to pop in and put a quick claim in on it. We don't have to fight for it or, or like risk Plosif's armies like beating us up over it. Okay, uh, we got all of our cities doing what we want currently. Uh, actually, we, don't, we probably want to put Watu. To... Let's do this. Get Brussels Town Hall queued up in more of our cities. Do we have Brussels Town Hall queued up here? We don't. Let's just get that built so that we can make another wonder claim. Get a little wonder hunger here. Is that hurting us? I don't know. Maybe. Might be. Multiple more intelligence is collected. Trade is being poached somewhere. There's a big curiosity for us. That's nice. All right, these guys are gonna go over here. And these guys are just gonna hop on to land here. There's an intel collected there, and our our envoys are doing the work. Doing the work. Right, these guys are full health, so we can pop them back out into the ocean when we need to try to find curiosities. The reason why we're gonna find curiosities in these empty ocean tiles is because I I actually don't know if there's any chance. Some people have said that there are chances that curiosities spawn in claimed land. I don't know that there is actually. At least I've never really seen that before. Typically, curiosities will only spawn in territories that are unclaimed. And so, in this stage of the game, at the early modern era, most of the uh, unclaimed territories become just open ocean. And so, your curiosities have a tendency to spawn in these open ocean areas, which is why you want to have your navies out. Uh, at this point in the game, that's where you're going to find all the curiosities spawning. Also, probably why you find so many of them spawning there, because they're still spawning, but they have limited space in which to spawn, because it has to be in unclaimed territories, or seems to have to be in unclaimed territories. Um, so then you end up with a lot of, uh, of kind of that, just that, that feeling going on of curiosities spawning in the oceans, and then you don't really get them on land so much anymore, unless they were already there from previous eras or whatever. We'll just start them here. Okay. This Karak is just gonna keep flying down here. See if we can't ensure a good border situation over here. That's kind of the goal. These guys are just gonna hang out for a little while. And we will... Yeah, let's check a few things. Perhaps check a few we things. We have some common ground. Obviously, we're not gonna have any treaties with for sore eyes. We could make an embassy uh, agreement with... Nox. Ooh, Nox has Amber Grease that we can purchase as well. Oh, actually, you know what? That's what we should do. We should spend some of our money. Spend some of our money. Plus three science per Amber Grease. Five available. That's a highly valuable trade route. I'm gonna do this. Got 151 money per turn. Greetings. We're gonna go to Burley. We're gonna do the same... We're gonna do the same idea. Plus one percent. Or plus one science on silver... Plus one science per silver on research quarter. I'm not sure how many research quarters we actually have down. I mean, some, obviously, because we had our stupas. We have our, what was it, adubas. We don't have a lot of them down. I don't know which of these would technically be better for us. The percent one. We'd only get two. We get a 2% boost. I mean, 2% science is probably decent. I'm off a thousand. What is that? I feel like 20. I don't, know, what's, don't, don't I don't do that. 
Let's buy some silver, try to push our science up a little bit. That's gonna, again, we're down to 98 gold per turn. Now, I don't want to push us too far down, but I want to make sure that gets us, we got a couple extra stability, like 10 stability out of that as well. So that feels, that feels good too. Oh, uh, let's quickly yes, check crises. Greetings. I hope you don't mind if I stare. Uh, we forgive this? Yeah, it's not even, I don't think we have anybody that's going to claim it. So I'm just going to forgive that right away. It would be that. best to let bygones be bygones. I don't have a if trade I wanted to laugh. Yet. Although we actually are trading salt. Cool. That's it. Turn. All right. Coming up on the end of the episode here, let's see how far we can get. We've got axes now uh, active on our political sphere. So let's check this. All right. What do we got going on? Plus 20 minimum war support to declare a surprise war. Plus 10 more support to declare a formal war. Oh, that's, I'm not opposed to that. That's nice. It's harder to declare a war. We're going to get plus 3 science per territories following your state religion. That would be excellent at turn 138. So we like that. We like this a lot. We want to... We're, man, how are we not pushing farther on that side? Oh, actually, I don't mind this. I don't want... I don't want this because that comes very problematic in late game. This over here, it's where if, if people follow your state religion, they get the text that you research. Actually has uh, nearly screwed me at the end of games before because the AI will be like, cool, I'll follow your religion and take all your tech. Um, it's kind of brutal. So I would probably want to try to trend over here, try to cancel that. We definitely want to stay away from this. This, I feel like, is broken. 100% war score. Want to stay away from this. It looks like that's the, t the trend right now. So we want to make sure that that happens as well. So... Though those are impactful, uh, in case in case you didn't think they were impactful, uh, they are very impactful. Here's uh, our final burn down over here. Uh, so we're gonna have a nice little. Uh, looks like Icarus is not retaliating currently on that. So yes, we're uh, just hanging out. Oh, hey, bring us. Who's, who can get there? Who can get there? Go grab it. That Burley's Burley's got Burley is doing weird things over here. I was just gonna say, let's take our navy somewhere more useful, but now I'm like debating whether we need to keep them over here because Burley is doing all these sus things with large armies and hunnic hordes and things. You know, like I don't like that. I don't like that very much at all. Uh, let's send him down over here because there's there is an ocean tile here where we could potentially collect some curiosities. Or Karak could do that. These guys are still gonna hang out. Lost City of Gold. Trade caravans laden with precious riches arrive often in the city of Urum. So much so, in fact, that envious locals often come to gawk, gawk at the treasures uh, are, uh, as the treasures are loaded by the foreign merchants. The stories of where the riches hail from are rife. Now rumors are spreading that there exists a legendary city across the seas where such is the wealth that lies beneath its lands. The streets are paved with gold. Every citizen wears jewel-encrusted robes, and every piece of humdrum pottery is lined with gems. How? Should you leverage such speculation? Uh, we get parsimonious. That costs us science. So we don't want that currently. Uh, wouldn't want that. <laughs> Let Urim become a place of avarice and gullibility. So it rains silver, too. I love the... It's so good. <laughs> Hilarious. We can debunk it and we get some science. But we lose some money. I'm not opposed to losing a little bit of money right now, potentially. We can discover... We can make a great expedition to find the fabled city and claim its riches. It costs us a thousand gold and we get minus one population. I, that, I really want to try this at some point. I want to try this at some point. The science investing right now is probably too important for us. Uh, but this, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Can you actually find uh, El Dorado? Maybe you can. We'll take the science. We'll take the science. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if we can get through one more turn. We might be able to. All right, we're going to put, we'll push it. One more turn. One last turn! Here we go. Hopefully nothing crazy happens. Uh oh. It's curiosity. No! That just appeared and Plosif was like, thank you. I will take it. I will take it. Alright, let's move this guy up here. We're not gonna move into this territory because I'm just terrified. Seven turns. I really want to just attack these guys, but do we... All together now. Like, poke our heads in? I mean, the military stars alone would be so worth it. Ready, march. Most of it's got better things to do than attack us at this point, right? Like, maybe we can get away with it. All right, let's... 
We're gonna attempt to reconsider here. From over here, but don't go at it. Don't don't allow yourselves within close of sight. Might destroy you. Let's send these guys up here. See if there's any additional curiosities up in this ocean section. We're not that far from home. Oh, nice. What do you know? A curiosity. Uh, let's just send. Yeah, let's just go. All right, this army. We're gonna sit for a second because I don't want. We don't want trouble. We don't want any trouble from Mr. Plosive's boats in this land where he can attack us for free. Okay, that is going to do it for this episode. We have uh, two turns until we burn this down. We're going to put another city down over here. So we're going to get a second city in, in the new world, which is going to be hugely beneficial. We have five turns left on Brussels Town Hall, which is excellent. Uh, let's check the wonders really quickly. Machu Picchu has been claimed by Icarus, so our our food distribution plan is in fact over. Thought we could get some nice food distribution out of our capital, which has a substantial amount of faith being generated from it, uh, which is being translated into food because of Angkor Wat, and I thought maybe we could take advantage of that, but such is life. Machu Picchu disappears. Uh, we will probably then uh, make a push for Tupkapi. Topkapi is a really nice one, so we'll try to push for Topkapi in that case. Um, we definitely want to try to claim at least one more. We don't have to build it right away. Uh, and Topkapi specifically, we don't have to build right away uh, because it's just it's more useful endgame, so we can hold on building Topkapi. We'll try to get that claim in anyway. So, ah, no more Machu Picchu option. Well, we tried. We tried. We tried. We could have tried to be a little harder. I don't. I still don't think we would have made it, but um, all of our cities are doing quite well. Once we get Corral under control... Where's Watu at, actually? A 19% surplus. How many attachments do we have here? Okay, first first thing, first thing next episode. We need to get some attachments made. We need to attach out and figure out where this this city probably needs to attach here and here. To be honest, because Kral already has. Kral has five. What's Watu doing? Watu only has two? Oh, we've recovered and then some. Okay, so Hwatu's gonna make both those attachments, probably. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. We also need to start building Java Moss Jeets. At some point. Ah, <laughs> uh, chat, there's always so much to do. Uh, thank you so much for watching the episode. I appreciate you. We'll be back next Sunday with yet another episode in this series. It's really intriguing. We're kind of in sim land right now with no war going on. Um, and so hopefully we can start cranking through turns and really seeing where this game is gonna take us. It's been super exciting to play. Hopefully you're enjoying the content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.